the title is When Manhood and Masculinity Become Toxic, a discussion on the real problems with men. Why am I doing this video? Well, this video has come about because of the fact that I uh, had a discussion on uh, Clubhouse. I went into a room and there were some guys in there talking about, uh, well, basically trying to instruct younger guys to not be so emotional. They were like, why are men so emotional? Their premise was that men have seemed to kind of backed away from the principle of slow months to things rather than flying off the handle and getting emotional. They stay logical. They stay in control. They don't show a lot of emotion. They use logic and reason. That's what stoic is basically means. So they were saying, you know, that guys have gotten away from that and that the younger generation of men are extremely emotional and which leads them to some out of control behavior. I was down with that. So I said, okay, they seem like some sensible people, at least from this premise. So let me ask them my question, which is why do, uh, why have men, the violence that men have against women increased so much worldwide and is there any plan amongst men who seem to be logical and reasonable like them to, to know what was the plan how they broke instead of talking about that they went off on this tangent talking about uh, toxic masculinity and how there's no such thing and all this old stuff here so I was like the question that I asked was completely skipped over and side side railed in favor of talking about something that was irrelevant because if obviously if people are behaving in the ways that I set out violent towards women and children and girls and you know even to the point of attacking strangers that reject them on the street then obviously there is a, a certain element of toxicity to these men's behavior therefore logically speaking one and one is two there obviously is something called toxic masculinity because the masculine part of them that feels like they should be in charge and controlling things and dominant was flipped onto the opposite side where they're going to be in control, not accept rejection gracefully and, and reasonably and demand that they get what they want out of women. Otherwise, they're going to use force and rage and threats and violence. OK, so to me, that constitutes toxicity. Um, I have a definition of it. You can look at it right here on the screen. It does exist, but these guys seem to be more focused on the fact that they didn't like to hear the term than they were on the reality of it. And what we as a community, what we as a people are going to do to turn things around. What is masculinity and how do young men, young boys learn those traits? It starts at home. A lot of the things that um, later morph into toxic masculinity are behaviors that are kind of uh, forced on young boys, like things like, oh, you know, be, be a big boy. Don't be crying like a girl. Uh, you know, don't hold your hand like that because that's the way that's the feminine like girls do. So as you see, the the core of masculinity seems to be the opposite of what they tell girls to do, to be, you know, dainty and soft and emotional and caring and warm and empathetic and all those kind of things. On the opposite side of that are traits like, you know, being hard, cold, not showing your feelings, stoicism, um, you know, working through the pain, shaking it off, not crying, even if you're like, you know, your arm is broken. This kind of stuff, those things are considered to be manly traits. Other traits that we associate with masculinity are assertiveness, being industrious, very interested in concepts and ideas and you know, abstract uh, conce concepts. Those are like things that are considered factual, tangible over things that are intangible like feelings. Another masculine trait is strength, both physical, mental, and emotional. To be courageous, brave, to be independent, to have a sense of violence. I mean, I hate to say it, but, you know, men like to fight. They think the solution to stuff is punching people. Um, a sense of protectiveness for the things that they uh, find smaller, weaker than themselves. A uh, competitiveness, the desire to win is very strong in men. To have a strong sexual appetite. To have a sense of passion about 
their woman, uh, whatever it is that captures their interest. They have a very passionate desire about it, and they can express that. For most men, it's sports. Uh, whether they're a participant or a, a spectator, they give it all. I mean, you just see them going crazy uh, for their team or to try to win. It's just really interesting to see. So that kind of passion is something that we and we associate with masculinity, uh, being confident and being decisive. So those are all traces. This is an all-inclusive list, absolutely not. But those are a lot of the things that we are quick to see. If a man does not possess these traits, then he is viewed as less masculine in our eyes. So on the opposite side of this, are the traits that are considered to be feminine. So instead of being assertive, women are supposed to be receptive, submissive. Uh, instead of being industrious, we're supposed to be, you know, just sitting around waiting for men to do, take the lead and tell us what to do. Or basically, that's the expectation. Uh, we're versus, versus being interested in concepts, we focus on feelings. Instead of strength, they want us to be weak. Instead of us being brave and courageous, they want us to be fearful. Instead of us being independent, they want us to be dependent. Instead of expressing our anger with violence, they want us to cry. Instead of being protective, they want us to be the victim. Instead of being competitive, they want us to just take whatever they give us. Instead of us having the assertive sexual appetite, they want us to be the one who is conquered. Instead of being passionate about something, they want us to just go along with what they want. And instead of being confident, they want us to be doubtful and insecure and to accept whatever they say and do as facts. And instead of being decisive, they want us to express doubt, self-doubt, confusion, weakness. So you see how these things can play out and the expectation of femininity is garbage. And the, these guys are saying, you know, the expectation of men to be these things is garbage as well. So it becomes kind of interesting because, you know, men can have feelings and women can be strong. Women can be brave. Think about Joan of Arc and you know, all the other women who led charges and, and decided to make a change in society. They were very brave to go against the status quo. So, you know, there are certain things that we, we will continue, though, to associate with manhood because that is the that creates a tension that is exciting for women. And if a woman is not excited to be with a man physically, then that would mean the human race is going to cease to exist. So there, these traits of masculinity can't really go completely away. And but they do need to be monitored because if they are let go too strong on their own, what we flip over to is something called toxic masculinity. And I'll explain that. Just in case somebody doesn't understand, I want to make sure that I say this. Masculinity in itself is not toxic, but just like too much ice cream can be harmful to you, it's wonderful by itself. But if you have too much of it, it becomes a bad thing. And that's the same issue that we would have with masculinity in it that it becomes toxic and harmful to people that are interacting with men that possess these traits and exhibit these kind of attitudes. Now, if you just define the word toxic itself, it means being poisonous, especially capable of causing serious injury or even death. And if we look at that and the kinds of behaviors that many men have, not only are they being uh, injurious to themselves, they're also being that way towards women and children and society as a whole. That is toxic masculinity. When a man is 
trying to talk to a woman, right? And she says, oh, you know, no, thank you. She's not interested. And he starts to curse her out because in that moment, his desire, his masculine dominant, um, his desire, his masculine desire for domination and control becomes toxic to her because he didn't get what he wants. So he flips over to aggression and in a wild display of anger and with his strength he can really hurt or even kill that woman just because she said no that is as toxic as you can get and it's something that we're seeing in mass throughout society here in the United States as well as other places in the world and especially on the internet these men are so angry and so toxic that they form groups to complain about women rejecting them and big up themselves. And then some of them go out and to society with with weapons and do harm to large numbers of people, especially women, because they're mad. And, um, you know, one of the traits of masculinity is control and stoicism, control of your emotions. I'm not saying that that's, you know, 100% the way that we should be training our boys but if you look at society now the men are so they're damn more emotional than women are it's just ridiculous to see how them crying and whining is so unattractive so let's talk about some of the the behaviors that uh are included under the umbrella of toxic masculinity so mental and physical toughness okay That is a good thing. I mean, you don't break down and cry at every little disappointment. But on the other hand, this kind of mentality is what makes men die early because they feel like, oh, you know, I should be able to handle it. If I go to a shrink, that means there's something wrong with me. I shouldn't need any help. You know, my arm is dangling at the shoulder. I'm going to still play football anyway because I can't disappoint my teammates. You know, this kind of thinking that you should be a soldier through no matter what the situation, um, There's that's harmful primarily to themselves. So we have a lot of men with undiagnosed mental illness. If they would just take a minute and go and seek some therapy, they would be better people and happier people. Okay. Another theme of toxic masculinity is aggression. And like I said, you know, aggression to use to defend country, family, self, loved ones, community. That's what manliness is for. We're not going to let you take what is ours. We're not going to let you hurt what is ours. But on the flip side of that is what the situation I just described, where, you know, their anger is out of control and misdirected and is being used to hurt women, children, and societies, as well as smaller, weaker men. Uh, The stoicism, not displaying emotion, you know, there's a benefit to that. You know, you can't always be emoting all over the place. And even as a woman, you can't do that. You have to maintain some level of emotional control and think sometimes that feels so much. You know, use your logic and reason, especially if you're a parent. You have to make sure that your children understand things. You can't be flying off the handle, yelling and screaming or or hitting them. And, you know, because you could injure the child or even kill the child. That happens. They have something called shaking baby syndrome, where people get so upset, they shake the little infant and, you know, horrible things happen. So sometimes being stoic and, you know, just holding all that in is what you need to do. But on the other hand, if you are constantly holding in your feelings and you're not expressing them to your partner, to people on your job, to people who are trying to take advantage of you, you know, you have to express things and talk it out. You don't use aggression and violence to express your feelings. You use your words. And so that is the toxic part of not displaying emotion. Another is, uh, the men who are very focused on rejection, rejecting gayness, you know, homosexuality. They'll make a phrase as a compliment to another guy, right? And, you know, they always want to preface it by saying things like, oh, you know, no homo. And it's like, okay, well, who's that, that insecure about their masculinity that you have to preface what you're going to say of that's a positive thing to another male 
with that. See, that in itself is a sign that there's toxicity and they're trying to find a way to address it. No matter what a man does for his intimate life, what he chooses to do, his partner, that doesn't mean that he's less masculine unless he portrays himself that way. But, you know, you just you can you can have gay men in your family that are very masculine presenting and they have all these other traits as well. They just love men. Okay, that's not a big deal. Or the self-sufficiency thing. Okay, men should be self-sufficient. Every adult should be self-sufficient. But if you have men who like to live off women, this is very common in the black community. They want to live off of women or they want to take advantage of women in some way. Having women helping them pay bills, moving into her house. He's not providing his own residence. He's driving her car. He's using her credit. These guys are not self-sufficient at all. I don't understand what a woman would want with a guy like that and call him her man. No, he's your child. He's just tall and he has a beard and a deep voice, but he's a kid. And so that part, uh, the, the that's very toxic and there's nothing very masculine about that kind of attitude or behavior at all. Another trait of toxic masculinity is emotional insensitivity these are the guys who you know you're you're crying or there's a death in your family someone that you know your parent or something is dying and the guy just has no he expresses no emotion you know women who have like really bad cramps he's just looking at you like what are you whining and crying for you know this kind of thing they have like no empathy no sympathy the kid falls off the tricycles all scraped up and stuff boy quit that crying you know versus pick that's your child it's a little little kid pick him up hug him you know clean off his wound show some concern they can't do that it's just really sad to see that they have a lack of interaction with the people that love them and they're so locked up in so locked up emotionally they don't really show much affection to women you know they're women they love her but they don't really express it they're not tender with her they're not loving with her the only thing they want to do is you know have sex but it's like what about the rest of the relationship when can you just show affection without putting pressure on her for some kind of sexual activity it's very it's very hard for a woman to be with a man like that i mean he comes across as very masculine but you know soon enough in the relationship the woman feels empty is cold she's broken hearted and she feels lonely and disconnected from her man and then she wants a divorce or they want to she wants to break up and the guy doesn't understand why he's like well you know I went to work and I you know I didn't cheat on her no but you you weren't really there so this is another aspect of the toxic masculinity where I'm talking about where it not only hurts the partners in society as a whole, the whole family. But it also hurts the man because now he doesn't understand why his woman doesn't want him anymore. And so he's angry and upset. He feels like he did everything the way he was, quote, supposed to do. But he just fails to understand that you're, you being so cold to her emotionally is what drove her away. Let me share some quotes from men about what they feel it means to be masculine one says the desire to compete the desire to lead to be courageous and adventurous and physical and to fill a needed role the need to dominate a woman sexually and have her surrender to you okay i'm like "Eh, maybe here's another to me masculinity is in no particular order the desire and will to improve yourself and those around you strength can be physical, mental, emotional, you name it. Just be strong in some way true to you. Assertive and confident, not aggressive. That's different. Thoughtful, courageous, and chivalrous. Hmm, I like that. Okay, here's another one. I would rather define masculinity in terms of having ambition towards positive goals that benefit both yourself and society. Establishing competence in a field of interest and having the self-discipline to achieve your goals and competence in your field and to adhere to standards of moral slash ethical conduct in your dealings with others. 
I like that. Those last two definitions, I can be on board with those. So if you're raising a son, it's going to be very healthy that you teach him to incorporate these things, not only in his attitudes, but in his behaviors and his plans for himself as an adult. On this channel, I have a video called The Tenets of Manhood, and it sets out 10 ways or 10 concepts that I believe are the foundational core of manhood. These, these 10 things were gleaned from lessons from my father, my, my two grandfathers, and my uncles. And so as a young girl, I had a very strong foundation for what a man should be, how a man should conduct himself, how a man should talk to people, and how a man you know, should, should, should uh, execute his life. And I would like to share those with you again. I will link to the video, but let me just give you a short summary of them, the 10 points. Number one, and this was my grandfather's, oh man, he used to beat this over our head. This, you have to be a man of your word. That means if you tell somebody you're going to do something for them, with them, uh, you're going to be somewhere, you're going to present yourself as a certain type of person, as in, I'm going to be your husband and I won't cheat on you, then you, fo you follow through with that. That the people around you that love you and depend on you, whether they be employers or family members, friends, they know if you say this, they can go to their grave feeling confident that it's, that's the way it is because you are a man of your word and you never waver. Okay, that is some personal strength and some determination and confidence and respect that people have in you that you cannot get any other way. Okay, that's number one. Number two, bring no harm to others. This is, of course, I guess, excluded in times of war or attack. But your goal in life should be to, to, to conduct yourself and do things in, to, that don't make other people suffer. You make choices that enrich and uplift others versus tear them down, damage them, or hurt them. So when you see men planning to, quote, game on women, they're going to use women. They're going to lie and, and manipulate women. They're going to assault women in any way, verbally, online with their words, or physically in your relationship. Those are men who are not being men. They're males, they're adults, but that's not manly behavior to harm other people. Do you're supposed to be protecting them, not hurting them. Okay, so you got your masculinity all kind of twisted. Number three, you take responsibility for your words and actions. We see this a lot, especially online. We run into men that never want to be accountable or responsible for what they say and do. It is the biggest turnoff ever. I mean, when I see it, I just, it just makes my skin crawl. I just can't stand it. And they want to call, you know, I'm a man, I'm a man. No, you're not your little punk. You, have, if you do something or you say something, you own it. That's what men do. Even I'm going to say, shit, I do stuff like that and I'm a woman. And if I say some messed up stuff to you or do something that's, that's going to you know, hurt you in some kind of way I, and I made a mistake, I will apologize. I own it. I decided to do that thing. If it was the right thing and I wanted to do it, oh, well, I mean, you just going to have to deal with it. But if I didn't mean to hurt you in some way, I will be shocked, appalled, and I'm very, very apologetic and I will own it. So that makes me a better man than you. That's what that means. Number four, strive to be an example for others to emulate, especially young boys. A lot of young men are growing up, little boys, teenagers, with no real positive father figure. The least you can do out in the community is talk, if you have interaction with teenagers or young males, be a positive influence on them. You know, I did a video where a young lady wrote to me and was telling me how 
this little her little nephew had a girlfriend and he didn't want to cheat on her. He was a little teenager. And he had these old uncles in their thirties and forties telling him that he should be out chasing girls and doing all this stuff here. So they were like trying to turn him into a toxic, lying fool that was gonna hurt this girl versus supporting him in his choice to be true, authentic and a man of his word. It was the most horrible thing. And the woman, you know, was just was shocked. So she told the parents what was going on. They had no idea that the, the woman's brothers were uh, talking to him like that. So they immediately, you know, started to run interference. But luckily the boy was mature, had been raised well by his parents. He didn't listen to his uncles. But, but still, I, that's not the point. The point is how they were talking to him, what they were trying to get him to do. It's like they were trying to bring him down. They wanted him to hurt the little girl and in turn hurt himself because he really loved this girl. So I was like, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. So if the guys would do this point four, be an example for others to emulate, show positivity, show growth, show that you're trying to learn something, that you're trying to understand better, that you're a positive influence, that you want to improve the community, improve your family, improve the lives of those around you. That's positive, healthy masculinity. Anything opposite of that is not. Number six, I'm, I'm sorry, number five, be a man of honor and stand up for what is right. Too often we see men in groups right there with their friends and they want to be accepted more by those knuckleheads than they do by the people who raised them to and taught them what was right and what was wrong. So they dishonor their family and dishonor themselves by either agreeing and participating in the nonsense that the knuckleheads are getting going, or they stand there in silence and they don't say anything. You're with men and you see them starting to flirt with, you know, which is basically harassing some young girl. You know, you should be stepping up and saying, dude, you know, leave the, that's a kid. Leave her alone. What you doing? You know, and just let the dudes know that their behavior is not acceptable to you. But so many men won't do that. It's like they have this this bro code that's so negative that they just shut up. And whatever their friends want to do, they're down with it. And they, you know, will laugh and, and participate. And sometimes, you know, they whip out their phones and record some kind of woman being abused or whatever. Instead of the three, or two, three or four dudes can take down one dude easily. You know, it's like, what is it that you guys are doing? You're standing there filming this woman's degradation and abuse instead of doing something to stop it. You know, even if you use your phone to call the cops, do something. Do something. But, you know, they don't stand up for what's right and they just participate in nonsense. And, you know, if you're even if you don't say anything, whether you're doing what they're doing or not, the fact that you're not doing anything to stop it, you're not telling them to stop it. You're not just voicing your disapproval or disgust. That is tacit agreement that makes you a participant in the nonsense. Number six, your goal as a man, a healthy man, healthy masculinity is to protect those that are too small, too old, too young are too weak to protect themselves. You don't attack them. You don't victimize them. You don't rob them of their innocence. But yet, this is what we see a lot of. Number seven, make your presence felt. What does that mean? Okay, you're a man, you got a family. Your kids need your positive influence. Your woman needs your energy. When you walk in the door, yeah, you worked all day and you probably are tired, but you know what? You need to spend some time with your kids. You need to play with them, read them a story, give them a bath, do something that you spend some time with them, talking to them, interacting with them, and letting them know that you care. You come in and pick up the remotes and start playing video games and zone out, leaving your kids running around, you know, trying to get your attention. And then you're mad and you're yelling and be quiet. You know what? Put the remote down. You can do that after they go to bed. Put some time with your children. Make your presence felt. They need to know this is my daddy. This is something I learned from my daddy. But when they get older, they can say this is some stuff me and my daddy used to do together. Create some memories with your children and make sure that you stay in touch with your woman. Okay, you cannot zone out like that. Number eight, be courageous. 
this reflects back onto you know the standing up for what's right being courageous being courageous is like you know you have to take a stance where you're not going you ain't down with the bs and it's going to require you sometimes to go out on a limb you're going to be different from your friends you might be some bucking some uh, some kind of behavior that's been approved of in your family but you are brave enough to go after what you want and, and to to make a stand about what is right and make a change if a change is necessary. You don't have to go along with everything just because that's the way that it's always been. When you can see that that's hurting people or it's not going to be good for you, it's not going to be good for your family, it's taking you in a direction that you really don't want to go, just because that's that tradition doesn't mean that you have to adhere to it. You can modify it a little bit or you can throw the whole thing away. Okay, but be courageous to live a life and be authentic. Number nine, make sound decisions. Does this mean that you have to decide everything by yourself? No. A smart man will seek out the wisdom and counsel of someone who knows more about it than he does. If it's going to be a decision he's going to make that's going to impact his wife and children, he's going to get their their vote, you know, their conversation too, their feelings about it. Well, what would you think if, uh, if we moved here, did that, change your school? You know what? Listen to the people around you so that when you do make a decision, it is based with full knowledge and all the information that you need to make a decision that makes sense. So many men make a decision based on their emotions. They don't think things through. And then they get home and they tell the wife what they decided. Or they come home with some item they bought or something. Or, you know, and she's looking like, what? This, how did you decide that? And shows him the error of his ways. And then most guys will get upset. But see, you could have avoided all that by seeking her counsel beforehand. That's your partner. Okay. And if you know, you're not going to know everything. But together, you two can figure it out. So, you know, and if you don't know how to do something, you know, ask your father, ask your uncle, ask your granddaddy, you know, go see an attorney, go see an accountant. I mean, do whatever you need to do so that the decisions that you make are based on facts and full information, full disclosure. Okay. And the final one, but the 10th of my tenets of manhood is you got to put in the work to make the magic happen. That's a, that's a Deborah phase. <laughs> make the magic happen. So whatever it is, whatever your dream is, don't be looking for other people to make it happen for you. Get off your dusty butt and make the magic happen. Roll up your sleeves. Get busy. Put in the work. Go back to school if that's what you need to do. Get your certificate and that's what you need to do, your certification. You know, but whatever. Get your, get, get your ducks in a row. Put together your business proposal. Present it. Make the magic happen. Don't give up until it does. That's what we need to see from you. Put in some work. Don't walk around with your hand out waiting for other people to do it for you. So, you know, toxic masculinity is something that I think uh, is very prevalent these days. Now, some men don't want to hear that. They don't like hearing that. They don't want us to use that term. Well, then you come up with a different one. Because the, the bottom line is, like I said, toxic the definition of toxic is something that harms others to the point where it could cause injury or death. When we look at the vast numbers of black women that are being hurt in relationships with black men, there can be nothing else at work but toxic masculinity. Okay, now I don't know what you want to call it, whatever word makes you feel good, but the bottom line is that's what's happening and... Um, you know, something needs to be done. It needs to be addressed. So ladies, if you see the traits that I discussed here in your sons, get busy doing something to correct it. If you have a man who behaves like this towards you or your children, you know he hurts children. You know that this man has, you know, abusive kind of personality. Get away from him. Is not going to do anything that's going to benefit you at all. He needs to get himself to somebody's therapist couch. That's what he needs to do to figure out why he's so angry and so out of control. There's nothing you can do to help him. There's nothing you can do to save him. He has to be a man and save and help himself. Anytime that they depend on you 
for their masculinity or, you know, their ego boost and all this kind of stuff. And he's not doing those things for himself. That's a lost cause. There's nothing you can do with this guy. So I hope this is helpful and explains a few things to you, you know, in this fight that we have with men about the term toxic masculinity. They really don't like it. But my, my, my thought is this. If you don't like it, then do something to change it. Okay, because the only way you're going to be called toxic is if you behave in a toxic way. Poisonous, injurious, harmful to others, mean and nasty. Okay, then your manhood is toxic and I just really don't care that you don't like that the sound of that. Do something about it then. This is Deb Cooper from SurvivingDating.com. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.